What is up, true believers? It's Mason here with Comics and Crosses, where we discuss the eternal truths behind our modern mythology. And today, I have a cool video for you. You know, one of my most popular videos, if not the most popular video on my channel, um, is uh, you can check it out here. Here, I don't know. I'm gonna try to put a box here for you, but it's the parallels between uh, Jesus Christ and Superman, and so. Uh, people really like that video. I mean, it, it's kind of like Superman's a recognizable figure. So I thought I would do something kind of in that same vein, but this time parallels between Jesus Christ and Spider-Man. Okay, so um, there are a couple things that I, that kind of, when I thought about Jesus and Spider, well, when I thought about Spider-Man, like what Christ-like qualities does he possess? Why are people drawn to him? Why is he such a popular character uh, that has stood the test of time like some of these other big ones, you know, like Superman, like Batman, like... As with all the content in my channel, I'm kind of making the point that uh, that the reason we love comics so much or these stories or these characters is because there are eternal truths uh, within them. And there are things that kind of... Um, tug on a place in our soul. So when it comes to Spider-Man, here's what I believe. Uh, number one, Spider-Man is, I think, reminds us on a deep level of Jesus Christ because he is not fantastic seeming by himself. As Peter Parker, his, his, his true identity, um, he was a nerd. He was a science geek. Um, he's a high school kid. He... Um, is is not seemingly very impressive he wasn't popular he was picked on by flash thompson uh all these sorts of things and so why is that like jesus well believe it or not jesus christ is described as there was in scripture is there's there was nothing really to draw you towards him uh and he was a a son of a carpenter um you know he took that on by trade and in fact he didn't really start his ministry or going out and preaching and discipling people until he was 30 years old you know he really led a pretty normal life it seems like um or at least there's no record of of the stuff before that so um stan lee who's actually in studio today mr stan lee's here um when he created Spider-Man, I saw a documentary where he mentioned that that people really advised against it, or they thought, oh no, you can't make a teenager a superhero. They're always the sidekick. If it's a kid, it's a sidekick. So making Peter Parker Spider-Man was uh, really against kind of um, what was the status quo at the time, back in the 60s. And so, um, so he has this quality of being just ordinary Peter Parker, just this kid who you might see at your school who isn't homecoming king, who isn't um, super fantastic, doesn't have all these physical traits and qualities. Um, you know, and that is a quality of uh, Jesus Christ. So second thing I wanted to bring out about Spider-Man, Peter Parker, and parallels to Jesus Christ is, um, the um all these monsters and you know crazy dudes that he fights so i think um after batman or maybe before depending on your opinion peter parker spider-man has probably the greatest rogues gallery he has recognizable villains such as the green goblin um dr octopus he's got venom and carnage and he's got sandman and hydro man and uh hobgoblin i mean he's got all these really great villains that some of them have made it into um movies even mysterio and these other guys um and so something about his uh you know i think all these great villains that he fights and have to has to assert himself over um they're seemingly um more powerful appearing than him uh you know you got green goblin flying around in this glider throwing bombs blowing things up psychotic crazy you got dr octopus with these incredible mechanical arms that he can seemingly be you know more places than 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 Peter Parker can, uh, you know, just seems larger, takes up more space. I mean, the lizard, powerful as a giant beast. 
And why do I bring all this up, all these crazy villains? Because in all of this, in facing all of this madness, Peter Parker, uh, Spider-Man actually seems like a slight character. He doesn't have a big billowing cape, doesn't have a majestic presence. Um, uh, kind of opposite as Superman in a lot of ways. And yet he still has these parallels to Christ because, um, because Jesus um, actually takes on these great, really powerful seeming um, villains in, in his work that is, you know, completed through the cross on the Christ, the cross where he was crucified and ascending into heaven. So um, obviously the biggest one being death. And so we don't always think of it that way, but in fact there is, if you ever think of the battle of good and evil, well, you know, if you're going to talk about the concept of God and Jesus and if these things are real, does he defeat Satan? Does he defeat these death and these enemies that seem larger than life, that seem bigger than he is, just as a man who is supposedly God, you know? Um, and yes, you know, we, we, I think a lot of people give big esteem to the concepts of, of death, of hatred, of war, of all these things. But the truth is that Jesus Christ coming as a baby and being living as a man and then loving people um, even when his own people, you know, the concept was that the Messiah was going to come and be, you know, become a king, uh, kick Rome out of, you know, out of their occupation of Israel. And uh, yet um, he was, again, kind of slight in his actions, but profound, had complete spiritual authority. And therefore, now, uh, you know, it says in scripture, death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? And the whole concept of man dying is overridden by the amazing Jesus Christ. <laughs> so with, with the idea of eternal life, with salvation, with deliverance from these things, from the evil of the world. Um, so I think, I think when we see just little old Spider-Man or Peter Parker, um, there is a Christ-like quality there that we recognize someone small and, and almost appearing insignificant or some of their actions seeming smaller than these big grandiose villains, we know in our hearts that that hero can win. Okay, and last thing I want to bring up here is in terms of parallels between Jesus Christ and Spider-Man is, you know, um, Spider-Man is kind of long been the punching bag of the Marvel Universe. <clears throat> There are, there are some characters that have it pretty hard. I mean, Daredevil gets it pretty rough. Uh, Moon Knight, you know, he's, he's had some hard knocks because he's not exactly mentally stable. But um, Peter Parker, uh, Spider-Man, um, has been through a lot. He had his girlfriend murdered by his arch nemesis. Um, I think at one point Aunt May was killed, but they brought her back as they always do in comics. Um, I mean, they brought Gwen back too, but... <clears throat> He's been through a lot, um, and he is constantly just being pummeled. He's going against the Sinister Six, and um, and life is hard. I mean, I think they did a good job of showing this in the old Tobey Maguire uh, Spider-Man movies, and even the Andrew Garfield ones. Of man, he has to make some really. He has to really endure a lot, um, and it just the hits just the blows just keep on coming, um, and yet he prevails. Yet he keeps going towards down his path of the narrow road, if you will, uh, of doing the right thing. Um, and I think that is a very Christ-like quality. Um, Jesus, when he was being crucified, they, they took him and they beat him. Uh, they stripped him naked and beat him uh, beyond recognition. Like he was so messed up that you couldn't recognize him if you knew him. They, they made a crown of thorns that would dig into his skull and cause him to bleed and put that on his head to mock him. They spit on him. They, um, <clears throat> they, they mocked him. Um, and, and yet it says in, in Holy Scripture that he went to the cross despising the shame. So you see how kind of, I hope that I'm painting for you this picture of how the, the uh, this hero Spider-Man that we know, um, his, his 
tenacity, his commitment to his his fight against evil is a Christ-like quality. Um, and I think that it speaks to something deep inside of us when we see this little nerdy kid becoming a a fighter, becoming empowered to take on these larger-than-life villains, we believe that he can overcome. So, guys, uh, those are my thoughts on parallels between uh, Jesus Christ and Spider-Man. I really hope you liked it. Um, I hope that you would uh, share this with other friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Um, I'm putting out one-shots like this on different superheroes and subjects. Also doing Christian perspective reviews of comic books. Um, a lot of indie titles, a lot of different things. So if you love comic books, this is a good spot. Um, I appreciate your time, uh, and please hit the notification bell, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and I will catch you soon next time. Peace.